Hey guys, it's Derica here, and today we're going to make a really cute and fun flamingo attachment that was originally made to fit into the Unique in the Creek wreath boards, but it can be used in the um, a regular wreath frame. You just have to put it at the, the bottom of the frame. You, know, you can't put it in the center you know, because there's nothing to hold it up. But it doesn't take a whole lot of um, supplies for this. You need a little bit of white felt, a little black felt, this um, hot pink color, a candy, I think it's called candy pink, but really I mean, any pink, um, a little feather boa, and maybe in the same color, um, a black pipe cleaner, some pink pipe cleaners, I mean, it's really just not a lot. And then little things for decor, like and this is just a, a sequin trim. You can use any kind of trim, guys. Don't, don't think you have to get that. One of the things I used in mine is because I had the flamingos having um, closed eyes. So I used this yarn. What is it called? It's from Yarn Bee. It's called Snuggle Up Black. But you don't need a whole roll of this just to make two little eyes. Um, this it, they just look like they look like eyelashes. They have a, a a vein and then all the little fringes coming down. So that's what I always use for the closed eyes. Um, I don't you you can use um, actually. Let me grab really quick. I have some of the peacock eyes over here. Maybe we can use those. Give me just a second, please. So we have these eyes listed as peacock on our web page, but honestly, they could just be used for anything. They have already um, have lashes on them. Um, you can cut those off if you want to. If you want to add longer lashes or maybe the softer lash, like one of these sort of things, you can. But or. When you're cutting these out, just make sure you're cutting into each little crevice of that little um, eyelash there. So anyway, that's those are the eyes we're going to use. So this um, is a sewn project. There are some some important steps that I'll go over in this that you you can't really um, not do if you don't stuff this far enough, then of course it's not going to um, stand upright in the wreath and that would not be good. So I am just going to pin these together, just right in the middle. I'm not one of those types of people that pins all around the outsides, but if that's you, then go right ahead. The first thing we're going to put together is the beak. Now, when you look at it, you can kind of see how this is, this needs to fit in there. Okay, it's a little bit longer on the top, a little bit shorter on the bottom. It's, it's like that on purpose. It helps the beak stay up like that. So those are going to go like that. And then, of course, these guys are going to go like that to create the long flamingo beak. So what I'm going to do is sew this part together first, just because It'll make things easier if these two pieces are lined up and sewn. So just line those two pieces up right there and sew them. Just black felt and white felt. And we'll do the same thing with this one. Now what we'll do is we'll place these pieces together and I want to line up the, um, I always call it the four corners, but really it's just right, you want the seams to line up right there. When you sew this, 
um, you don't want the lines to be like this. You want the lines to line up. If they're off a little bit, especially on the top of the beak, it's really noticeable. So make sure you pull it, pull them out to where you get the, the black and the white exactly in a line. And then just place a pin in there. And if that means you have to kind of maneuver the rest, it's felt. Felt gives you that little bit of wiggle room. So you can kind of wiggle it around um, and stretch it and, you know, kind of make it do what you want it to do. That's why I love to use felt. So we have that. All we've done so far is sew the seam here. Excuse me. I thought I was about to sneeze. <laughs> Sorry about that pause. <laughs> so now um, we're not going to take these apart. We're going to leave them pinned together just because it's easier. But we're going to take this over to the machine. We're going to flip this this way. Bring back this top layer. And we're going to sew just that top layer. And when we get to this center right here, the, the very, like the corner of the mouth, if you want to call it that, the corner of the, don't lift your needle up. Because then we're going to pivot it and we're going to bring this around and it's gonna, it's gonna kind of warp everything, but it will flatten out. I promise you, it will flatten out. Um, but don't, try not to take, if, if your needle comes up, just put it right back in again, okay? So we're gonna open up this one. And the same thing, we're gonna, whoops, let me try that again. Okay, so when you have everything pinned together, you wanna work with the same side, right? So I'm working with the bottom side here, not this top side, we're just gonna flip that back. So over here, we want to work with the bottom side, right? So we're going to take this, we're going to flip it around, and we're going to line up the top portion of the beak right here, and we're going to sew that. Quarter inch, seam allowance, whatever. Um, when you're using felt, it's not super, super important. Okay, so I've gotten all the way to that corner. I know it's really hard for you to see on the camera, but my needle's still in there. I haven't taken the needle out. I can pivot it. I can move it around. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the white piece and I'm going to pivot. Oh, I have to lift. I have to lift up that in order to move it. You have to lift up the foot because the foot has those little grabbers in it. That's not going to allow you to move it. But I'm going to take the white piece. I'm going to pivot it around and like I said, everything's all kind of mushed up over here. Don't worry about it. It will flatten. And then while the needle is still in the fabric and while the white piece is now um, lined up with the bottom of the pink piece, I'm going to put the foot back down. So essentially what you have, you have sewn this to the pivot point and then you pivoted and you went that way okay and like I said even though it all bunched up it flattens out very nicely when you're done and this this would be the outside that you would see okay so now we'll do it with the other side again working with the bottom piece if you want to flip it over if that makes more sense to you you flip this around this is the bottom piece right line up the top of the beak and you're gonna to have to sew this from the other direction it's from the inside not the outside but doing the same exact thing get all the way to that center lift up the foot turn it around grab the white piece and then line it up with on top of the pink piece so now we're sewing the other, the lower lip, the lower beak. Okay, so again, we sewed here, we had to pivot it, we had to pull the, the fabric over to make that meet here, okay? Now, when you lay it flat, it lays nice and flat, just like that. But again, I want you to take your pins and wear your seams are here make sure that they line up exactly you can open up your seam allowance and flatten them 
or you can just push them out of the way. It doesn't matter because we're stuffing them. They don't have to be flat, okay? This is not quilting, but as you can see, my white and my pink, they line up perfectly. So this is where I'm going to put in a pin. So I don't want those to be jagged. Same thing with down here. See how it lines up perfectly? Okay. So that is the hardest part of this, really. That's the most, co most complicated part is right there. So now we're just gonna sew around it, all the way around, just like you would normally. Even like here, when you go to turn your fabric, lift up the foot, but leave the needle in there. So you're, you're not having to lift up and start over at another starting point. Pull out your pins as you go. flip it over and make sure I didn't, um, you know, I don't have any areas that are really close to the edge. As soon as I flipped it over, I noticed right in this corner right here, it's really close to the edge. We are going to have to stuff this very tightly. So any place that is, I don't, I don't know if you can see it, but it's right in this curve. It's very, any place that's like that, I'm just going to reinforce it a little bit because we need to have a lot of polyfill in this to make the head stand up. So I would rather now go ahead and reinforce those areas than have them blow out while I'm shoving polyfill in them. I don't measure a quarter of an inch inseam or seam allowance, excuse me all the time. I just kind of eyeball it. And a lot of times, you know, it's off. It's off just a little bit. So I just go back and go over it again. To me, it's not a big deal to flip it over and just, I just eyeball it all the way around to make sure there's enough felt. So those are the only two areas that I feel like we would have had possibly an issue. So now we flip it around. I need a dowel somewhere. Maybe. Oh, I'll use a quilt quilt stick. Okay. Not a quilting stick. What is this? A knitting, knitting needle. That's what this is. It's just a gigantic one. And so now I'm just pushing all of it out. Um, one trick to turning things if they're if it's like this, sometimes when you go to try to push it, what you're doing is you're just catching it on this edge and you're not pushing it. Stick your finger in these holes and then use the stick on the edge of your finger and then push that. So see how it's coming out right there on my finger, just like that, it's just easier. That way you don't risk pushing in the through the felt. Okay, make sure your nose is all the way popped out. There we go. There we go. That looks perfect. Now this part up here, I mean, definitely if you're going to make these, do some practices. Okay. You, it may not come out perfect the first time, but it's okay. It's just felt nine times out of 10. You can just take the seam, take what you've sewn out, put them back, re-sew them again. It's, it's not a big deal. Okay. So, don't think that uh, you have to be perfect at that. Sometimes it's a little confusing. I know I've been told I make it look easy. That's because I've been doing this for so long. It's really second nature to me. Does not bother me a bit. I can think of it in my head before I think of it 
when I sew it. And uh, that just comes with experience. It's not something you know how to do right off the, the bat. So give yourself some practice pieces. It's just felt. It doesn't cost a lot. Even if you have to throw it away, it's okay. Um, it, it just uh, doesn't turn out perfect the first time. Just keep trying it. So I am just stuffing this big old beak. I'm just using my forefinger in there, just trying to get it all the way into the very end of the nose. This is these projects because they have to stand up and they stick out um, like a 3D effect. You don't want them to be loose. You don't want them to be half filled. These need to be solid. Whereas some of the other attachments, you know, the legs hanging down, the little thing, they don't need to be real super tight. But see how tight I have that? I mean, it's it's stuffed all the way in there. That's the effect that your wreath makers are going to want if you're choosing, if you're gonna sell these. They don't want flimsy. They don't want the beak being able to bend. They don't want the head or the neck kind of being flimsy. They want it to stand upright. So, I mean, this is the part that's gonna take you, because you can only do just a bit at a time until you get to the head part. I'm just, I mean, you're going to use quite a bit of poly. You'll be surprised how much polyfill will fit into this little pink head. You could probably get almost a whole, one of those bags full in there. It's amazing. Okay. So once I, ha I have the, um, the beak and the actual top of the head pretty, pretty tight, pretty secure, um, most important thing to make sure like this is tight up here like there's no gaps there's no little um air pockets or anything but this neck is super this neck and then where they're going to attach it back here this l shape it has to be tight okay i can't stress that enough it has to be and you'll see i'm going to get this as tight as i can and then when i go to put the um the attachment part in there I'm going to make, put more polyfill in. It's going to be overstuffed. That is why I make sure when I sew it, I sew it. And it's, there are no, no, there's no places where um, the polyfill will bust through the felt. Felt's pretty strong though. So I have never really had a problem with busting through on the felt as long as it's sewn properly. Now, I do have an area here that's going to bug me. Right here at the back of the head, I don't know if you can kind of see them. Right there, there's a little dip, and I can't get my finger over there. So I'm going to use the dowel just to kind of loosen. It's because I put it in a big wad, and the wad was not separating for me. There we go. Yeah, now it's smooth. You just keep on going. Now, I, I looked at back at, I made these exactly five years ago this summer. So I have been making these, well, I didn't make them last year. I never really had time, but I have been making these for five years for the Unique in the Creek um, members and the people who love to use those, the wreath, bo wreath boards, excuse me. And it just doesn't seem like that long ago. <laughs> it seems like it was just, you know, maybe last year, but it's been five years. So um, we made four of these attachments. We have a bald eagle, the peacock, the flamingo, and a turkey for Thanksgiving. So really, really cute. And I would love to have made more. Just time got away. You know, time just, just gets away from you. Okay, so now we're going to do the legs. Now, they're just big knobby legs. You can put wire in these. In fact, I forgot, forgot to add the wire on the pattern. I just realized the wire is very important, actually. I'll have to go back and update the pattern before I finalize it for you guys. But you really want to wire, oops, <laughs> I'm just three pins everywhere. You really want to wire it because you know how flamingos will 
you know, have one leg crooked um, when they stand, you know, and they're relaxing. Um, a lot of wreath makers like to make, they don't want just two straight down legs. They want that one leg bending forward like a flamingo would if when they're just chilling out, you know, in the water. So that is, uh, yeah, you definitely need the wire. Maybe I did, maybe I added it. Maybe I'm just thinking I didn't add it, but these are 18 inches long. So you're gonna need at least 20 inches of, of uh, just a good 18, 17, 18 gauge um, wire, just something a little heavier, not that floral wire, that floral wire will just, is not gonna work for you. Now, I like to put a little pin in each of the toes just to keep them from sliding around on me. I wanna move that one. Okay, so again, we're just gonna sew it all the way around, and then we're gonna go back and we're gonna sew the actual foot again. But first, we'll do this. <laughs> Flipping it over, making sure that my toes did stay lined up and I didn't um, miss anything. That one looks pretty good. I don't think I'm going to get my fingers in this one. Let's see what kind of tools and gadgets here. I have these little hemostats. These will help greatly. And what I'm going to do is go all the way to one of the toes and then just start wiggling, wiggling it up. Oops, uh-oh. Let go. Pull it out again. Well, these things don't want to hold tonight. All right, it'd be easier for me to pull it out completely. Now, if you have small fingers, you can probably get them in here. I just cannot. All right, try this again, all the way in. This time I'm gonna lock the hemostats. I didn't lock them last time because usually it's just by me grabbing them, the grip, they usually stay but there. Now they're locked. Let's see if we can do this. Do a little bit on each side. Work it up. There we go. Again, take out your dowel. Go down here and push your little toesies out. Again, I'm putting my finger in there, using the dowel to push it out. Like that. Okay, so like, oh, that one didn't come all the way out. Make sure your toes are completely out all the way. There we go. Um, I don't like stuffing the feet because birds don't have big, fat, fluffy feet. So I only stuff from the ankle up. But the feet here, they need, they just look awkward. So what I like to do is just go around and we're just good, just for purely for looks, Kind of just sew a little edge all the way around this. Kind of gives it more of a, like a duck foot almost. So I just, because I know I'm going to put some feather boa right here on the ankle, that's usually where I'll start the, the sewing because then I can cover it with the feather boa. I'm just going in about a quarter of an inch or so. 
can tell I don't measure. You'll see on all of these bird um, attachments, I always do this on the feet. And then you can see, it just gives that little extra. Since we are not stuffing up here, you've never seen a bird with a big fat foot. You know, it's called bumblefoot if you all have birds. But you want it to be a nice flat foot like that. But the wire, when we put it in, is going to go all the way down into this middle toe so that they can still, um, you know, pose it if they want to. So now we just start stuffing this. And don't forget to really like accentuate the knobby knee. You know, that's um, a big thing for a flamingo is that big, big knee. Get your finger in there and make sure you stuff it out so that it's um, really, really obvious. go almost all the way up to the top. I want to leave a little bit up here because I like to fold the edges in when I put the wire in there just to give it a nice clean um, edge at the top. Around. There we go. I think that's good. So now we're going to take, I'm going to cut 22 inches just to be on, um, you can always cut it off. So I like to cut just a little bit extra um, just to make it easier. All right, so we have this big, I don't know, it's probably, it's actually like 26 inches, a little more than I needed. So um, you're going to want to put the tiny, just grab the end with some pliers, make a little loop, just so it doesn't catch on things. Not a big loop, but just a little loop like that. Otherwise, it'll be catching on everything as you go in and make sure that, that it's closed, you know. It's just easier to shove it in there when it's not catching on the polyfill and everything else. And I like to determine what's going to be my front and my back. Honestly, it doesn't really matter as long as I do it on both of them. So, um, and then I just run, I run this kind of along the what would be considered the back side until it goes all the way down into this big toe down here or the middle toe Excuse me. so it's it's all the way down into the tip of that toe so now this would be the front of course but now it can be posed like that if they want it or it can actually be posed to go well this is going to be very thick but it can be posed to go forward like a flamingo would do if they were standing so Get everything in place. I like to take my fingers and kind of just shove it in so it's a nice, um, even, clean opening. And then I just get some hot glue. I don't sew. I don't ever sew over wire. I mean, that's kind of silly. Um, you would never want to sew. You can walk. You, you can walk your sewing machine over a piece of wire. If you want to sew this, you can just do just do the hand crank, but don't ever sew over wire. And then you just hold it or put a put a clamp on it. Of course I don't need it to be that long now. Let's see if I have any clamps right here. There's one. So I'm just gonna put a clamp on it and let that one just let it cool for a minute. Super simple. Okay, so now we have this big old flamingo. And obviously you're gonna do the other leg as well, the exact same way. I'm just, for, for recording purposes, I don't think I need to do both of them right now. 
this. So let's see. So now I, as I said, I liked to use this yarn. And now you have to remember, guys, I bought this. Um, it was not expensive at Hobby Lobby, but I, this is all I've used of it in, in five years. I mean, you, you don't need all of this if you don't want it. But I, what I would do, if you choose to go this route, now it's totally up to you, is I would take like an inch long piece, put it on my board, cut about an inch long. I would just glue, just like you're putting on fake lashes. I just liked these better than lashes because they're soft and fluffy. And see how that kind of looks on there? Of course it needs to be, you know, combed or finger combed anyway. So it, it had its eyes closed. That is an absolute option. Again, Snuggle Up Black is what this stuff is called. It's from Hobby Lobby. It's made by Yarn Bee. Five years ago, guys. Now, if they don't have it anymore, I can't help that. <laughs> I don't know where to get it, okay? But I'm not going to do that this time. This time we're going to use the, um, the little peacock. Let me get some actual scissors. We call these the peacock eyes because we use them in our peacocks, but you can use them in anything. there. You just cut these out. If you have not worked with resin eyes before, they're not stickers. You just cut them out like that. And then I'm going to use these little bitty snips to get in here in these little tight spaces. That way I don't accidentally cut off the edge of the eyelash. I'll just trim them up, make sure they look good. So, well, that's the wrong side. So this one would be over here like that. And it's a cute eye, the little eyelashes on it. I like that. So that is what we're going to use. But we won't do that. We won't put the eyes on just yet. We will um, need to get the, the base of it taken care of first. These are not as easy to cut with. They'll work. Again, you can use whatever kind of eye you want. There really is no rule. Um, whatever look you're going for, if you have Google eyes, then use Google eyes. If you just want to use a black dot, like a just like a stuffed animal eye, then just use a stuffed animal eye, honestly. Um, I liked the closed eyes with the eyelashes. That's how I have made mine for years. But now that we have resin eyes, why not use them, you know? <laughs> why not? They're cute. And they add just a little more color to it, and a little more pop to it, so. All right, so now we're gonna take a disc of foam board. And we're going to hot glue a piece of scrap felt to it. It doesn't really matter what color the felt is, just whatever scrap you have in front of you. And we're going to put the felt on it because we are going to put these pipe cleaners through it and the felt just creates a barrier. So otherwise the pipe cleaner could pop right through this foam board. So we're going to make four holes. poke the pipe cleaner right through them. I like to put the felt towards the inside, but you can, it really, just think about if you, you don't want these pipe cleaners to be pulled out. The first few that I made when I made these, um, I did not put this felt on there and the, the wreath makers pulled, they, when they tugged on these, they came right out because they didn't know, they didn't realize how easily they would come out. So I had to very quickly come up with a solution and the piece of felt just really, um, it does not allow, even if the pipe cleaner gets a little, it, it rips the foam board a little bit, it won't allow it to um, pull out of there with that piece of felt in there. 
Okay, so I like to just twist these up and kind of move them out of the way because they'll get in your way. So now what we're gonna do, this area here, and you might think it's impossible. I do this on my lap, so it's gonna be really hard for me to do it on this table. Um, I usually put the beak in between my knees and hold it. You're gonna get this disc in here. Now, sometimes if you sew with a little bit bigger inseam or seam allowance, my goodness, I can't get that word right. Seam allowance, um, you might need to you might need to cut down your your foam board a little bit if you cannot get yours in here. Uh, mine is not going in easily. I'm gonna I have to put it. I can't do it for way up there. Let me just try it down here first and see before I start cutting it. <laughs> oh no, mine went in. Okay. So, sorry, it's it's just one of those things I can't do way up here on a table. Um, but see how I I got it in. Basically, you want it inside the opening like this. And then what you're going to do, again, easier on your knees, start tugging on the, oh, I know I want to cut this down just a little bit, um, because you want it to fit in there snugly, but you got to get it in there. And so that means you got to trim it just a, just a bit. Get these out of the way. Got to trim it just a little. I'm gonna, just taking a tiny bit off. I'm not taking a bunch. Um, the disc pattern is, I mean, I, I made it just the slightest bit big. Just so if your opening is a little bit bigger, it will fit. And if your opening is super small, then you can trim it to fit. So again, we're gonna get it in here where you have the, the felt all the way around it like this, like that. See how it's in there nicely now? And now, again, much easier to do between your knees. You really want to push it in there. And you want to make sure it stays level. Don't let it get sideways. And you're just going to keep tugging it all around, all the way around the edges until you get that thing. See how far in we're, see how we're like an inch in now. We're like way in there. And you can see this, you can see the foam board in there. That's what you want. But you want to go now. If you're doing this and you don't have any polyfill right here and it's and you push on this and it's flimsy then you need to take it out and add more polyfill okay it's very important that this is very tight so I'm gonna add a little more polyfill and it's you're gonna think oh my god how can you get any more in there but you can it does it will go in there now put it back in there this is an important part I mean don't don't take don't take shortcuts with this because if it doesn't stay upright on the wreath board, your customer is not going to be happy. So there. So it's, okay. So I added that little bit more polyfill just to really make this really stiff right in here. Now I've got it in there. It's level. It's about equal. There's about an equal amount of felt pulled up all the way around the edges. So now what I do, I'm holding it with my fingers. I don't want it to move around. We're gonna put some hot glue right on the foam board in here. Just kind of all over. Make sure you have at least an inch, at least an inch of felt sticking out, okay? And then what you do is you just start gathering it with your fingers around that opening where those stick out. And just, and you can even start, you can kind of push it in even more from here. Um, but you just want that, that felt to be nice and flat there. See, now, I mean, yes, it does have a little bit of white showing right there. Honestly, not the end of the world. It'll be okay. Um, when they open these up to put them, this is what's going to be against the foam board. So, but as long as it just looks, you know, kind of neat like that. And you can see from this angle, you know, it's pretty big like that. So this is the basic attachment method I use on all of the Unique in the Creek attachments that I created, all of them. Okay. So while that is cooling, I wanted to give our flamingo kind of, I guess you can call it a mouth. I don't know. But what I did was I took half of a pipe cleaner. I curl it around my finger and then I curl it up. See how I make that little curly cue? Just take a little practice just make it's just a pipe cleaner it's probably going to be too long though but i do that on purpose because i can trim it so oops 
So <laughs> don't go this way. That That's not right because it's kind of supposed to be the mouth like that. I think. Isn't that right? It's been so long since, yeah. So basically the black, you can use black paint pen too, guys. If you don't want to use the pipe cleaner, this was, I made these way back before I knew what a black paint pen was. Okay, so you can use, um, you can just draw this on with a black paint pen if you're, if you're really comfortable with it and you're good with it. Kind of, maybe you can put it on with pencil first and then go over it with the black paint pen. But basically it's just a little curly cue. It's, it's not really anything um, complicated. I just, this was a lot of white here and I wanted to do something like this to kind of break it up a little bit. All right, but it is too long. So I put my finger where I need to trim it. So, cause you don't want it to be too, too long. So it's gonna look like that. Um, and then I just take, I used to use pipe cleaners for everything back in the day. Of course, now I've learned so many things, so many new products, so many different things to use. But this is old school. This is how I originally did it. I personally, if I was going to make one today, I would use the black paint pen. But I wanted to give you guys both options. I wanted to show you. The paint pen is self-explanatory. I would literally draw it on with a pencil first, and then I would go over it with the black paint pen. So I personally would use the paint pen. But for, for you guys, for right now, I'm going to show you what I did with the pipe cleaners. In case you are not confident with the paint pen, paint pen, or you just don't have one. Okay, so I just I just make my little curl, you know, a nice little curl, and then I bend it. I don't know. I just want it to. It's not really looking like a mouth. It's just kind of breaking up that that white area. So I get it where I want it. Now I'm going to take hot glue and just go all along the back with it like that set it right back down and we're not going to put anything on the, the black part in the front okay so now we're going to put on the eyes and we'll have to look at it um, with eyes like this you have to decide how you want it to look, you know, straight up and down, kind of tilted to the back, you know, just get it, get an idea of what you want your little guy to look like. If you're using the Google eyes, of course, they are universal because they're round. So but then just get your hot glue on the back of it and then just put it right where you want it. I'm just going to go with it right there. How the top. Kind of like that. Kind of want to tilt up just a little bit. Maybe I can move it just a bit. There we go. Mm, that's okay. And then the other eye. Okay, so now she's got these cute little eyes. I think she would be super cute if you were to cut these eyelashes off and to put on either the doll eyes, the plastic ones, or just the human eyes to make them, you know, something big and like costumey maybe. Um, like I know they have those Halloween time, they always have those eyelashes that are super, super long. They're just cute, just fun. But yeah, there she is. So you can kind of see her from both sides. Um, you know, when people look at the wreath, they're going to be looking at her head on. So you want to kind of make sure everything is even. You don't want it to be too far off, especially these black parts on the nose or the beak. Excuse me. All right. So now I just use some pink feather boa. And I like to put a little bit of this on just because I have it. Um, again, you can decorate your little neck however you like. But you gotta give her some bling, right? I mean, she's she's a fabulous flamingo. My gosh, I'm so used to doing this on my lap. It is not easy to work with these pieces on a, a 
there goes my glue gun. It's not easy to work with these pieces on a table. I always have things in my lap. So we're gonna put that there. Let me grab my glue gun. And this is purely just for looks. Again, you don't have to use the feather boa or this trim at all, really, but um, just get what you can find. The best place retail to look for feather boas, of course, is Hobby Lobby. They do have many, many colors in stock every day. Um, if you go to Joann's or something, you, you never know what you're gonna find. And if you order those really inexpensive ones off of Amazon, like the ones from International Trading Company, I think it's called, like the bags with all the different colors that come to Dollar Tree, yeah, they're, they're about as big around as a pipe cleaner. <laughs> so just be wary. If it's really cheap, there's a reason. I just see, these are craft size. These are not, um, these feather bows that I get, this is a craft size. They have a step up, which is a more of a luxurious size. It's like a three, this, is, this would be considered a one and a half inch. A three inch is much thicker and fluffier, much more expensive, about $5 a piece. Um, and then they have like the big luxe ones, which can be $25, $35, $40 for one feather boa. So, you know, you just have to go with your budget. So I just use the one and a half inch craft. Mar this is called a marabou boa. It does not have big feathers in it. It's just the fluff from turkey. Fluff from the turkey and then they just dye them in all the, all the pretty colors. Okay, so I don't wanna cover up our sequins, but I definitely want some of this feather boa on here. I'm gonna go down just a little bit so that our sequins aren't covered, kind of like that. Sorry, I keep going off camera. And we'll just close it up back here. Okay, I think we have a we have a little place right here where I could use it a little more. You'll, you, have, you just have to feel the feather bow. Make sure the ends are down, glued down, and this one side is not glued down. So I'm going to put in just a dab of glue somewhere in there. It's hard to see when there's that many feathers. But look at her little head. Isn't she cute? Now, when this is attached to the board, this sticks out 3D, and then the wreath maker will put all the pink feathers behind it. It's super, super cute. Um, it's just something different. It's something that nobody can really duplicate, you know? The, um, some people like to use the lawn, the lawn flamingos the same way. They will hook the body to the back of the wreath board and then have the front of the bird and the legs and the beak sticking out forward. And I mean, that, those, that's fun too. I mean, it's all fun, but I think this is just a really good one. So I'm going to, I'm going to decorate the little leg the exact same way I did the neck so that the pieces all kind of tie together. Now, remember I had my wire and you can kind of see it in there along the back of this. Don't try to push through the polyfill guys. You'll be there for days. Trust me. Um, just along this back seam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to curl that just so it doesn't puncture anything and then fold that to the back side. And I think most people, when they get their bird, if you are shipping it to them, they'll know that this must be the back side because this is where you have the wire back there. So I'm just going to use same, same kind of concept, a little piece of this and the feather boa, but I always glue the, the sequins on first because once you get the feathers there, you can't get them out of the way. I mean, they're just, in the way. So we'll put this up just a little higher so that we have room to put the feather bows right here and it won't cover our pretty little sequins. We don't, I mean, what's the point putting them on there if we're going to cover it with the feathers, right? Okay. Trim off all the little bits. There's lots of cute uh, trims at Hobby Lobby that are in all the 
this is actually an iridescent pink. It's not even pink pink. It's just iridescent pink. So just get whatever, whatever you can find. Don't think you have to try to find what I have. Remember, these bins are five years old. So I don't know if a lot of this stuff is even available anymore for these birds because I, it's been so long. So then you'll take your little piece. Of course, I know the feather boas are, but I'll put it right there. Little added bling, little foo foo. Okay, so obviously, you know, you would do the exact same thing on your other leg as you have here. I'm not going to do both of them just because I feel like you can go back and pause and rewind and do all of that. But you get an idea of how your cute little set is going to work just like that. And uh, the picture that is in the file with this pattern, of course, is a five year old picture. So it didn't have the sequins, it didn't have the eyes. It looks a little bit different, but it's still basically, it's the same pattern, it's the same process, it's just decorated differently. So um, if you are saving patterns and putting them in your files, um, be sure to make note of the, the extra little things we have on here so that when you are ready to start making them, you have the whole list, okay? Um, I can take a picture of this one when I am finished and um, perhaps upload it. But as you can see, this, the only thing different was the eyes and the sequins. And that was just because I thought they looked cute on there. So I hope you guys enjoy this cute little project. Um, they're very popular. Once people start seeing that you're making and selling them, I, I, I've never had a problem selling them. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. I've never had a problem. So anyway, this is our little flamingo for the um, wreath boards. Okay. That's the way we would word it. Flamingo for the wreath boards. And, uh, I hope you enjoy it. Bye-bye.